All right, we'll get started. Coco, um, just give us your reflections on the match and, and getting through to the semifinals here in Melbourne. Yeah, it was a fight. I think today was definitely like a C game. Um, so uh, I didn't play my best tennis, but i um, really proud that I was able to get through today's match. And hopefully I got the bad match out of the way and I can play even better. Okay, good luck. Yeah, over here. Uh, congratulations, Coco, on your first semifinal at the US Open. Uh, and thank you for sharing that routine that you have uh, uh, before the game. What are the routines you got, and is there a particular one here in Melbourne that you would like to share with us? Um, I mean, the only thing that I've been doing consistently is playing card games every night with my parents. Um, done that every day. Um, Pre-match, just eat and listen to music. Um, yeah, that's about the only... I'm not a superstitious person. I don't have a... A uh, complete ritual. I just go with the flow and go with the feeling. Okay, Matt. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, you mentioned the other day um, that on your shoes is the coordinates of the public courts mm -hmm. where you started playing in Florida. You also went to France as a young mm -hmm. kid. I was just curious with all the with all the academies and stuff in Florida. What was it that made you want to go out, go to France, and play people from train with people from Europe? Patrick Vlatoglu, I mean, he was coaching Serena Williams at the time, and um, she was my idol. And it wasn't really a decision. Like, I got invited over there when I was 10, so it wasn't like I made the decision. Um, it was just, you know, my parents, they got presented this great opportunity to go for a week and all expenses paid for. I'd never left the country. Um, and, yeah, and then went to Paris for a week, and we did this process which called Champ Seed, and it was like, it didn't feel like it was not an auditioning, but I guess in a way. And he just picked the best of the best to kind of help fund uh, our careers, essentially. Um, there's a couple other players that came out of that. Um, at the top of my head, Holger Rune is one of them, um, and uh, the Frutova sisters, another. So um, <clears throat> that program kind of just exposed me to different ways to play. Um, probably would have never had red clay experience if it wasn't going there. Um, and then with Florida, um, I only was at Academy. It was not even a big one, but it was called Sly Black uh, Tennis Academy. And um, he actually is in Thailand now, but he was my childhood coach. Um, and then I went to Gerard Loco Tennis Academy, um, another small academy. So I never did like the big academies outside of um, going to Marataglu, maybe six to eight weeks out the year. Um, I didn't want to commit, or my parents didn't want to commit me to like spending full time there because I still had a family at home and friends at home, so they didn't want to disrupt my life, um, which I think was the best decision. I think we'll go Erson and then James. Erson. Congratulations, Coco. Um, when you were 5-1 down in, in the first set, what went through your mind and at what point did you feel like you were able to take control of the match? Yeah, I was playing not great. Um, I was just missing everything on both wings and not serving well. and uh, I was just trying to win one extra game. Um, yeah, that was really the one thing. I was just like, let me make it competitive. Obviously, sometimes when you're down 5-1, you're not expecting to win the set. But, um, you know, I believe every point and every game matters. And eventually, I, the score started to get closer. And, yeah, then I was back on serve. And, yeah, I was just fighting as much as possible. Uh, I, I know going in, playing her, it's a tough match. She's pretty athletic. And, um, yeah, we kind of play similar. I think today she was just more offensive, which... Uh, I wish I was taking the offense from the beginning. Okay, James. Coco, I know you've said before with regards to the WTA in Saudi Arabia that you wouldn't want to say anything because it's you know rumors and not set in stone. Yeah. Do you hope and think that you, the players, will have the opportunity to privately maybe have input on that decision before it is set in stone? Because it feels like once the decision's made, then to an extent, what what's said publicly doesn't necessarily make a difference. Yeah, I think the WTA. They, I've noticed probably Cancun, they're trying to take more steps of communicating with the players about certain decisions. And part of the reason why they didn't go to Saudi um, last year for the finals was uh, they didn't have time to, they didn't want to, they wanted to make sure the messaging was correct. And I feel like if we go there, um, I feel like we have the opportunity to make change. And hopefully, you know, I know the situation there isn't great. And um, definitely don't support the situation there, but I hope that w if we do decide to go there, I hope that um, we're able to make change there and improve the quality there. And 
engage in the local communities and make a difference. Um, yeah, and I don't, there hasn't been a decision made about Saudi, and so I, I can't really speak much on that, but I will say that um, they are trying to at least communicate with the players more. I don't know if we have, like, you know, a final say or decision making, but at least uh, we're getting in the conversations, and I, I do appreciate the um, effort to change and include us more so we do know more what's going on because at the end of the day, the WTA was founded by players, so, um, yeah. All right, we'll go the guy in the purple behind, yeah, no, no, down, you got, you right there. Thanks. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, Brad Gilbert, during your US Open run last year, you praised your problem-solving ability during matches when you were able to sort of fight your way back in. How important was that today in, in that first set? Yeah, it was really important. And, you know, today was frustrating because I knew how I needed to play. I just couldn't execute. Um, and then eventually I was able to find it, which is what I'm proud of. Um, but, yeah, problem solving is tennis. Um, every, you know, you could play someone uh, today and, and maybe a week later they'll play you completely different. So um, it's a part of it. At the end of the day, you're given a scouting report but you have to go with feeling and try your best to win. Um, so that's what I did today. Here we go, Courtney and Simon. Courtney? Uh, Coco, congrats. Yes. Um, just, you mentioned C game. Did you have a sense of it, like when you were warming up, that something was off, or was it just like once the match started, it, it, it was hard to find, you know, what you wanted to do or be able to execute, I guess? Yeah, um, no, I mean, when I warmed up in the pre-match, uh, like earlier this morning, I was hitting good, um, and I was like serving good, so I actually felt really good, and then when I went on court, and then I had two break points in the first game, so I still, you know, felt good, and then I don't know where it all like happened, to be honest, um, so yeah, it wasn't something that I felt this morning, or even in the warm-up, or even in the like five-minute warm-up before, uh, it just kind of just happened, I felt like I was going for shots that I normally make and was missing and missing by like a lot, not even close. Um, so I think that was like frustrating. Um, but I'm like, like again, I'm just glad I was able to get through today. Here we go, Simon, and then the guy up in the back corner. Yes. If I'm not to you, I'll get to you. Yes, Simon. Coco, okay, okay. your mum caught the ball at one stage. I was just wondering <laughs> if you saw it and if she's still celebrating. <laughs> um, I did not see it, but I. I heard the I heard somebody in the crowd say mom caught it or something so I think I like got the gist of what had happened um and then I saw the video of her celebrating and I was like it wasn't that hard of a ball to catch but um you know celebrate your little wins so uh yeah she was really happy with that and I <laughs> I mean I'm sure you guys seen from US Open video that she likes to celebrate in crazy ways so yeah, if it's just catching a ball I mean whatever makes her happy <laughs> I mean her son is a catcher so she should make that <laughs> alright we'll go to the guy at the back and then this gentleman with the glasses and then Jill yeah Yeah, Coco um, since your US Open win you've gone from being the hunter to the hunted have you noticed any change in that regard and have you sort of approached you know, matches differently or has it just been the same old um, no, I don't really approach matches differently. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a change and just the energy. I mean, you know, you do feel like you're the one to be and, you know, I feel like people step on court and they play more free and, and want to play, not want to play, everybody wants to play their best games every day, but play their best games because there's no pressure. And yeah, I definitely feel a little change. Um, but also at the same time, like, not really, because when I was young, like, nobody wanted to lose to, like, a 15-year-old, so I felt like people played really hard, too. Um, but, yeah, definitely, um, I mean, I remember being in that position, too, when I was underdog, and you just play free. So, um, yeah, it's always, I think it's a quote, it's like, it's e not easy to get to the top, but easier to get to the top, but harder to stay there. And, and the goal is to stay here as long as possible and, and keep going up upwards. I mean, I'm not at the top, but I'm up there. <laughs> okay, this gentleman here and then Jill, yeah. Uh, there's, there's been talk in the last year or so about merging the WTA and the ATP. I was wondering where you stand on that, and do you think it would maybe be a good way of um, boosting um, prize money in the women's draws for non-Grand Slam tournaments? Yeah, I definitely think that, I mean, it would help women, especially the women's side of the game. Um, I find that when I'm at combined events, I just feel like the energy amongst the crowd is better. Um, and for most of the events, it's equal prize money when they're combined. So, yeah, it definitely will help our side of the game. Um, yeah, and I just feel like the I genuinely enjoy um, when both women, men and women are at the same tournaments just because I also have friends on the guy's side. So not even, like, money-wise, it would just be 
um, more fun for me as a player around the grounds. But um, yeah, I definitely think it would help us a lot. And hopefully one day it could be a possibility. Okay, we'll do three more. Jill, and then this gentleman here, and then this lady here. Okay, Jill. So just two questions, wondering if you've read Winning Ugly, and then two, if you can talk about um, Barbora or Arena. Yeah. <laughs> I bought a copy, but I didn't read it. Uh, so maybe I should add it to my reading list. Um, yeah, I did buy one, and I didn't. When like, my mom actually got it for me. Um, we were in the talks of this possibly working with Brad, and she was like, "You need to read this." And she read it, and I didn't read it. And but you know, I feel like I got the real version, so I don't need a book. Um, but maybe it could help. I'll probably do it just to surprise him. Um, and yeah, for Barbara. I haven't played her in a long time, I believe. I can't remember the last time, but it's been a while. Um, she's obviously been in this position before, and I think she's a really smart player. We always see her like watching matches live and um, paying attention, and I think that she's probably one of the smartest players on tour, and when she's on, she's a tough player to beat. And obviously, Irina, um, it's always a tough match with her. I think she's playing really well this tournament, um, and yeah, obviously that US Open final was uh, tough, and. Yeah, I think either way it's going to be a tough match. I think these are the later stages of the Grand Slam, and um, for both of them, I think that they're in good form. Okay, yeah. Three from three from Grand Slam semifinals. Does that give you confidence heading into this, heading into these big matches? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think being in the semis um, a couple times before definitely doesn't make it. I mean, it's obviously a big achievement and a big deal, but I think just when you have the experience, you don't feel like it's your last time ever reaching this you want to like play with it play like it's your last time I guess because you don't want to take advantage of the moment but also um, just feel like you can do it again so yeah I think I mean I, I didn't even know that was the record um, so hopefully I can make it four for four um, and if not um, I guess I'll have to go back to the drawing board but it does give me confidence knowing that at least in that stage of a grand slam that my nerves are usually settled so hopefully I can go out there and be settled. Okay, and okay. um, uh, forgive the slightly simple question, but I just want to get in your words, what are, uh, in your opinion, your super strengths as a player? Yeah, I think for me, um, definitely my movement um, and when my serve is on, I think my serve is a big weapon for me and same with returns. It didn't return that well today, but usually I do well with that. And I think just my mental um, strength, I think that's gotten me through a lot of matches and I feel like mentally I'm one of the strongest out there and, and I try my best to reset after each point. So yeah, I think those are my strengths um, that I can think of right off the top of my head. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.